Hello, brave explorers of statistics. In this video, I'm going to do a brief overview of some primary aspects of our course organization and help you get better oriented to the different resources and tools we'll be using, and also to provide some guidance about how to use those tools effectively yourself and some tips on how to study successfully for this class and how to make it through uh, from surviving stats to thriving in stats. So first we'll get started with a brief introduction to just what's happening in the field of statistics right now. Why is this so important? Well, we're in an age of expanding frontiers of statistics and there's many new sources and uses of data. And so in this class, I'll help you develop uh, an understanding of the traditional frontier of statistics, research, um, and the uh, research literature that's out there. And I'll also help you get oriented uh, to build skills and use the tools that are um, growing and expanding in this field. We'll also emphasize critical thinking at many steps. So uh, you'll note that a lot of our uh, approaches require you to think critically rather than necessarily exclusively mathematically. Let's first take a look at these materials. Our required te textbook is Statistics by Friedman, Pisani, and Perbs. This is a great classic textbook in the field and it's set up like a workbook so that as you're reading through each chapter, you can uh, do the exercises along and the exercises help you build your understanding of the material. So don't expect that you're going to get every exercise uh, correct the first time. You probably won't. Um, the point of the exercise is to, it, is to help you understand the key concepts and to um, build on those. So we will use this statistic, this textbook as our primary resource and uh, we'll use the fourth edition. I'll reference the fourth edition, but you're free to choose uh, the third edition or an international edition to save some money. We'll also have videos like this and I'll host online office hours, which are live. The videos include guidance on how to use uh, tools in the course, how to do labs, uh, tips for studying, and solutions for review exercises. Now, videos are either recorded ahead of time and uploaded or recorded live, for example, during office hours and uploaded. So anytime I do a lecture online or office hours online, it's recorded and if relevant, uploaded for your uh, use after the fact. So you, you don't have to be there with us at the same time. If you're watching videos that have already been recorded um, and you have questions, please feel free to call or text me with your questions and I'll be happy to help. And really it is fine to call me and it's often the most efficient way for me to help you with answers to your questions. We can get through questions a lot more quickly and generally help a lot more efficient, efficiently over the phone. So uh, you, my phone number is on our course site and please feel free to use it. I have highlighted this Casio calculator for, um, and I, I do recommend it. It's not required. You're free to use another calculator that you have, um, but I recommend using the this Casio or getting a similar calculator because when you try to use your phone calculator, the battery will run out quickly, phones get interrupted frequently, and it may or may not have all the functions that we need uh, mathematically. This calculator, the Casio, has never runs out of batteries because it's solar charged. And using a handheld calculator like this enables faster data function and entry and it computes faster. So when you're doing your homework, you'll be able to get through it more quickly just using a, a regular handheld calculator like this than uh, locking and unlocking your phone, um, et cetera. We will also have more complex calculations and later in the class. And so 
as necessary, we'll use Excel and a statistical program called SPSS to do those complex calculations. And video, I'll provide videos of how to use both Excel and how to program it to do these calculations and how to use SPSS as needed. So um, when we reach the point in the class where we are using SPSS, don't worry, you'll get lots of assistance with how to, how to use that tool as well as Excel. Some other supplies that might be useful to you are a diary or notebook for book work. I use composition books like this one, this decomposition book, and there's many fun um, versions of these decomposition books are great because the covers are more fun than a standard composition book. And you should always try to make stats as much fun as possible. Um, and there's a, it's complex learning all this new material. So really emphasize funny and fun things where you can. And these are 100% post-consumer waste. Another tool that you'll find some students find quite useful is to have erasable colored pencils. Um, these are great for when you're working through the book. You can have your colored pencils there right, right in the book, right gratuitously in your book. Treat it like an activity book that you had when you were a kid. Most of us probably had those. And, you know, you work through them, have fun, color and diagrams. Get to learn to love it. And these erasable pencils work great. You'll definitely want small sticky notes or their equivalent. So you can tag certain pages in the textbook uh, that you'll want to refer back to frequently. And uh, flat, most students do make flashcards in one way or another. And the five by eight flashcards are particularly useful because you can fit a full example problem on them. We'll use a variety of information technology tools too. Uh, YouTube is where I'll post our videos. BlueJeans is another video uh, conferencing app and it's, the university has a subscription to, and we will use that for our online office hours. We'll use that when we're meeting live online. Lab Anywhere is another university sponsored uh, program <clears throat> that you can use to access SPSS when you're off campus and there's an explanation on how to use lab anywhere and how to install it on our course site under technical assistance as mentioned before we'll use excel i'll uh, release slides in uh, powerpoint and you'll use word to produce lab reports and your homework uh, you need a google account for some of our labs and finally uh, an app to scan to PDF from your phone's camera. So those of you that want to turn in your homework, want to do your homework by hand and then scan it in to, to turn in rather than typing it up, that's perfectly fine. You need to scan it to PDF. I can't accept uh, image format homework because Blackboard can't open it. So uh, there are many apps to scan to PDF from your phone's camera available free. And the most appropriate app would depend on whether you have an Android or an iPhone, and, and I'll post some uh, resources on our course site to help you find some apps or an, an app there. Next main component of our course are the exercises. Now, why not just call them problems? Well, it sets up the wrong mental expectation. These aren't just, these aren't problems to be solved. They're exercises for your brain to help you build the proper pathways so that you can learn to speak basic statistics. So accordingly, you don't need to do each exercise perfectly. You don't need to solve every, every problem with a perfect solution. You need to try the exercise. Use your, um, exercise your brain pathways and get them, uh, the neurons firing along the right pathways by doing the exercises. And it's better to try many exercises than to fry your brain over one or two exercises that you just feel are determined to get correct. If you're stuck on an exercise, call me and, and get some help. So let's talk about the different exercises themselves. 
regardless of whether we're talking about exercise sets or review exercises, our two primary types, the exercises are due four days after the topic or chapter is assigned. Per my late policy posted on our course site, you can submit your work late for up to two days after the due date of any particular assignment. So if you're two days behind us, don't worry about it. You can still submit your work. It's no problem. If you get further behind than that, that's when you should get in touch with me and make sure that um, you're keeping in touch so I can help you come up with a plan to succeed and help you with whatever issue is getting you caught up behind us. Also, it's important to note that the exercises are all graded complete or incomplete. So you don't have to get all the answers correct. I'm grading whether or not you've made an honest attempt to do the exercises, not whether you got all of those exercises correct. So thus, when you're doing the exercises, put forth your best effort and turn that in. Don't feel like you need to uh, go back and revise your work to reflect uh, the correct answer you found in the back of the book, for example. I don't want to see the answer from the back of the book. I already know what's back there. I want to see what you were thinking and your attempt to answer the item. Trying is the most essential part of learning statistics. You can't learn to do statistics by just copying down my solutions or the solutions from the book. You have to try it first to yourself and then look at it and learn from that experience. It's, it's an iterative process. So our first type of exercises are the exercise sets. These are featured throughout most chapters and they're at the end of chapter sections. They have um, are identified by letter and generally will complete the odd exercises. So if you want to work ahead and you um, somehow you got way ahead of us and you don't have, uh, you want to get started on a chapter that hasn't been assigned yet, be my guest, complete the odd exercises. The answers are in the back of the book for all of the exercises. So I suggest having that location for efficient use. So you try the exercise and then check the answer in the back of the book. Trust me, it's the only way to learn it is to try first. And although I, I require completing the odd exercises, I will recommend that you try, especially in the exercise sets, you should really try all of the exercise set problems if you can. Um, I'll, uh, I'll pull from all of our exercises when, when building exams. We also have review exercises. These are at the end of most chapters. Again, generally we'll complete the odd exercises. And then you'll more frequently see even exercises, especially from the review exercises on exams. And many of the review exercises have step-by-step -step solution videos. Review exercises are a bit different than exercise set questions because the exercise sets have items that are contained to the section they're direct, directly attached to. And the review exercises are bringing together topics from um, the whole chapter or perhaps previous chapters. Finally, we also have special review exercises. These are not required, but they are definitely recommended and are the best way to help you prepare for exams. I'll provide some recommended special review exercises for each exam from uh, the chapters. That the, There's four sets of special review exercises, and these four sets of special review exercises correspond roughly to our four exams. So they're a great resource to you, lots of great items there, and I strongly encourage you to attempt to do them as we are approaching each exam. Another component of our class is the lab component. Lab activities will help you explore the new frontiers of statistics and um, 
interesting applications of statistics and uh, use of data sources. Sometimes you'll collect data yourself for labs. Sometimes we'll use data that has already been collected and analyze that. Um, some of our labs use uh, cool online tools for statistics. Some of the labs use SPSS and uh, some of them you'll be able to do on your on your own, like their home activities. So there's a variety of different activities in the lab. I try to make them as, make them fun and interesting and to help apply the material that they uh, follow. So the labs are assigned on Fridays and do the following Wednesday. Why are they assigned Fridays? Because they relate directly, usually, to that week's material. So you should, in any week when there's a lab assignment, you should do the material from uh, our textbook first before you try doing the lab activities. Make sure that you use the template provided for each lab report and that you watch the video overview for each lab. And these will be available as the labs are assigned. Exams are another important part of our course. There are three unit exams and a final exam. While the final exam is labeled comprehensive, really all the exams are comprehensive in that our material really builds on itself. Uh, it's like a snowball, and as you, you'll see, as we move through the semester, that many chapters build directly on the previous material. Across all of the exams, the items are similar to assigned exer to exercises, um, and I'll provide a list of topics covered on each exam, and we'll review the topics during a uh, lecture or uh, upload a video before the exam. And to prepare for the exams, do more exercises. Go back and do the even exercises that uh, were not assigned. Um, that's the best thing to do to prepare for an exam. Do not reread the chapters. That's not a good use of your study time do more exercises. If you're saying, well, doing the exercises is hard, how could I do more of them? Well, if you're having trouble with the exercises, then you need to schedule office hours with me so we can meet and I can help you with them. Or um, call or text me so that I can help you with exercises as you have questions. So let's say you're doing an exercise and you don't understand it, the time to get a hold of me is right away, not after you've spent an hour trying to understand that single exercise. Don't spend an hour. Spend a few minutes. If you're still struggling, then it's time to reach out. And we'll also have um, in our exam review sessions the lots of opportunities to do more. We'll do more practice exercises then. And one final note about our exams. The final exam, although it is comprehensive, it, um, unit four really is the culmination of the three other units. So it is a primary topic on the final exam. So don't don't feel that unit four is getting um, inadequate attention on exams because we we'll only have formal exams in the previous three units. Uh, it's because so much of the final exam contains unit four. I thought it cruel to impart a whole extra uh, unit exam for unit four on you. So that's how the exams break down, and we'll be discussing them more as we as we approach. Now let's talk for a minute about the stats experience. I know many of you have come in with um, some preconceived ideas about statistics, some worries about maybe your math preparation or concerns of just about this class because of a, a reputation that statistics has, not just um, at our school, but it's really uh, statistics is a required class at most any university for pretty much uh, 
any pathway in the social sciences and the sciences at minimum, health sciences, et cetera. So um, lots of students take stats. And before we break into uh, my specific tips for success, let's talk about London's Arcelor Middle Orbital Tower. This will become self-evident in a minute why we are. This slide, yes, this is a giant slide, is made up of 30 sections and has 12 turns, including this tight corkscrew twist. The slide, which has a top speed of 15 miles per hour, wraps on one side of the orbit and descends in only 40 seconds, ends with a 164 foot straight drop to the bottom. Whew, scary, isn't it? Although, admittedly, it looks really fun and, and I would love to do this slide. This is SOCH 215. This is learning statistics. It, you're at the top, you're looking down right now and thinking, oh my gosh, it does look pretty cool up here, but the ride could be scary. And maybe you're afraid of heights. Many people are, I understand, but now you're going down the slide. And the question is, what kind of journey do you want? Do you wanna be like this woman, terrified the whole time and cringing? Or like this one, I'm sure her heart is racing, but look at how much fun she's having and making a memory the whole time too. Well, is it even possible to feel this good ex about statistics? Absolutely. And I know which experience I would rather have this semester, and I'm guessing you would rather reach the end like this final woman thrilled and with some cool selfies. So how can we maximize this thrilling experience? Let's talk about uh, this surviving stats to thriving in stats. Sun Tzu said, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Well, I'm not saying stats is your enemy, although some of you come in feeling like that, and I understand that, but you can't win here by, by fighting it. You need to make friends with statistics. The, the fear is, it's not going to help you learn. Fear actually impedes learning. And since fear triggers a fight or flight response, um, and absolutely both of those are, are contradictory to a, a effective learning experience, you need to stay like this adorable kitten, calm, and just trust that I'm gonna lead you down this path successfully. Make friends with statistics. If you make friends with statistics, statistics will make friends with you. How? By providing you with these crucial skills I guarantee you will use in your careers. Uh, statistics is exploding right now. There are new tools for statistics every day. Uses of data are expanding all the time, especially in the health sciences. And more and more people who are not specialized in statistics are still expected to be able to understand and use data. So you need to make friends with statistics. and. Remember, sometimes your best friend does things that irritate you, but you love them anyway. Statistics is going to be like that too. Sometimes it'll irritate you. You got to just let it go and and still be friends anyway. Just keep giving it a chance. Give it another hug and that will help you um Maintain the learning process. Statistics is a mysterious stranger right now. And even at the end of the semester, some things about statistics will still be mysterious. This is just an introductory class. So don't expect it's gonna make perfect sense. You wouldn't expect to take a semester of Spanish and then leave that class as a fluent Spanish speaker. Well, it's the same thing here. You're learning. There's a lot of trial and error. You need to keep thinking about it. 
meeting with your friend statistics. And trust me, you'll get there. We'll skip that little cute video and talk about these study tips. So there's a bunch of study tips on here, as you can see. Um, and you'll be able to look at this slide and read through these later on your own if you like. But you can see that there's some commonalities here across these various study tips coming from a few of them. First on the left, Texas A&M, and then lifestyle tips um, from Schooly, another major student resource site. And one of the most common things that they, they all recommend is to sleep. So it's so important that you make sure to not stay up all night sleeping or studying statistics, but to get some sleep. So if you're struggling, you, you uh, aren't going to be able to learn more by just keep continuing to put in more time. In fact, research has found that if you take two groups of, if you take this, a, a group of students and divide them into two groups, one studies and they study the same material. One group studies for two hours, and then they take a nap for two more hours, and the other group has to study for four hours straight. Then both groups at the end of this four hour time period take the same test on the material study. Guess who does better on the test? The sleepers, the people who studied a little bit less and took a nap. Why is that? Well, it's brain, uh, it's neurology. Your brain needs sleep to cement these skills you're learning. Uh, and another way to take advantage of this mysterious and amazing um, things that happen during sleep to solidify your learning process is to study stats for at least 10 minutes before you go to sleep. It tells your mind to get going thinking about statistics and uh, you can get some learning done then or get some neural pathways built even while you sleep. There are also lots of learning skills that will help you when you are studying statistics. And I want to highlight a few things from this great poster. Uh, positive self-talk. This is so important. So often I find stat students beating themselves up when they get a question wrong. Well, don't do that. It's great you tried the question. If you get something wrong, Congratulations, you just found a gap in your understanding of the topic. It's something to celebrate and to stay positive about because negative self-talk will completely impede your learning process. And the positive self-talk is one of the most important things you can do to keep yourself emotionally intact while you're, while you're doing this class. Stay calm and study on. Also, you need to believe you can learn it. I know some of you are back taking this class a second time. Um, you have to let go of your previous experience or any preconceptions you've come into this class with and try to commit to at least being friends with statistics for the next few months. I'm not saying you're going to, you have to be BFFs with statistics for the rest of your life, but you do need to try to be BFS with statistics for the next for this semester. Um, part of that is taking responsibility for your learning. In an online class, you really have to stay on top of yourself to uh, keep working on the material and stay um, and stay on top of it. Be organized. Learn from your mistakes, and when you find a mistake. Congratulate yourself and change your behavior. Say, oh, hey, I was reasoning wrong before. And now I see the right way. Learn from it and pat yourself on the back. And just to hit home a little bit more of this idea of how can you adopt some uh, pers a perspective that will be most effective to helping you learn during this class. Some really important points here, the precision of language. In statistics, the 
you'll see this over and over that close reading of the exercises and the exam items, that's what's necessary. The language is precise. You have to not try to read too much into it, just read what's there. And remember, you're just given that information. Um, and it's very, it's very precise. Oh my goodness, maintain a sense of humor about it. Try to have fun with stats. Um, laugh at yourself, laugh at funny things I try to include. Learn continuously. Try to remain open to the new ideas that are coming at you and uh, keep listening, being creative and flexible. And that's going to be really helpful for you in this class. And this is going to sound um, maybe different to than what you're expecting, but you need to take risks in that you have to try these questions. You don't have to do it perfectly. You don't need to spend an hour trying to answer each question, you know, and spend an hour on each question. Don't do that. Take a risk. Just try it. When we're in our live sessions and I'm asking uh, questions, just try to answer them. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Take the risk. It doesn't matter if you're wrong. What matters is to, it's actually great if you are, because it gives you an opportunity to learn. So these are some really important points here, and this will be available to you later. One final note. So as we you think, okay, this is all well and good. I, I tried to already do these things. I have a great attitude. <laughs> good. Another thing you have to do to be successful in statistics is to stay ahead. Don't let yourself get far behind. If you get behind, you won't ever be as happy as Usain Bolt here, Olympic winner, um, is while he's, he's bolting ahead of the competition. Now, let's think a minute about his training process. Was it, he, he wasn't born uh, and the fastest sprinter in the world. That was something that he had to train intensively. Uh, and that training, I'm sure it left his muscles sore many, many days, but he did it anyway. And then the next day that was a little bit less sore maybe. Well, your brain is a muscle and you're using it intensively like this. Sometimes statistics will make your brain sore. Give it a break then, because that's a sign you need to let your muscle, re muscle relax and then step up your training the next day. Some other really essential parts of success here, uh, take breaks. Like I said, I can't say this enough when you're studying, take breaks. I know many of you are trying to um, maybe do all your studying on just a few days of the week. Well, that's rough, but you still have to take breaks when you're, when you're doing it. So try to uh, at least every, at least every hour, give yourself a 10 minute break. I'd really recommend taking breaks even a little more frequently than that. Remember to sleep. Please remember to call me and ask questions when you have them. And talk about stats in a positive way. Talk about the things you're learning. Um, not about how it's hard, but about how you're learning something exciting. Teach and talk to your friends, a, a captive patient, a captive child, a These are great, uh, <laughs> you don't just have to have captives, maybe you have other people who are willing to, to learn um, from you, but people that you can talk to, to, to explain what you're learning and tell them about these cool things um, that you are learning, this cool new material. Stay optimistic and trust me, trust your professor. I am, here to guide you through this class. I'm your coach and I'm going to help you on this path to success in statistics. So keep up with the homework and one day you will mature from inquisitive statlings to beautiful statterflies. Thanks for watching this introduction video for general statistics. 
peruse my YouTube channel for more videos in and topics and statistics and our labs, as well as other videos on study tips and other ways to help you succeed with statistics. And remember, for the most efficient way, do some statistics every day.